I support streamer favoritism. Now, let me rephrase that a little bit. I don't. Well, kinda. It's kind of a complicated topic, which is why I'm making a video about it. What is up, guys? I am Joseph, and welcome to Run Escape, a very opinionated RuneScape-based podcast where I talk about topics that you guys suggest for me. If you would like to suggest a topic for the next video, be sure to leave it in the comments below or uh, tweet at me on Twitter. It's at WYRLOR1494 if you want to contact me there. Um, but again, just before I get started, since this is a very opinionated based video, if you disagree with something, you can dislike, that's fine. But I would love to hear your opinion in the comments uh, in a civil way. I want to keep the comments very civil and kind of refrain from attacking other people specifically. Uh, just to be a nice person, I guess. This is not meant to be offensive or to get anyone angry, but if you disagree, uh, just I'd love to hear your opinion down below. But again, keep it civil and try not to hurt anybody's feelings. In the meantime, this is America after all. Anyway, let's get into the video. So today's topic is streamer favoritism. And I'm going to kind of give a definition first and then give my take on it. Uh, so I kind of have two definitions. There's there's a main definition, then it branches off into two to two directions, and that's the, the definition that I'm going to use for pretty much the entire video. So my personal definition of streamer favoritism is when the Jagex moderators or Jagex staff shows preference to someone popular on either YouTube or Twitch, and then this is where it splits off. It's either with gain, with in-game benefits, or without purely cosmetic, if you will. So those are kind of the two directions that are taken. Basically, when a streamer gets uh, gets preference, and then if it's either beneficial or non-beneficial. So I'm honestly okay with the first one, with it being not in-game, without any in-game benefits. And I, I would imagine most people agree as well, although some don't, as seen by many things that have happened in the past. And the reason I'm okay with this is because it's pure advertisement. Now, I just graduated from college, and even though I had a major in computer science, I had a minor in graphic design, which required me to take many advertising-based classes. And that kind of molds my opinion on this a little bit, uh, really because when you have something that's popular, and then you have people use that thing that's popular if that makes any sense the more you promote that popular person the more you reach other people now i don't think that made much sense because i just kind of thought of that as i was saying it but to kind of simplify it when you have a game like runescape and you have someone popular on twitch twitch uh, has a way to see popular streamers so if you have someone who's popular on stream there's other people who don't play the game who's able to see that. And when you act in a way that makes it seem friendly and very open in communication between the staff and the players, it's very enticing and enjoyable for not only the viewers who play the game, but also for those who maybe just randomly clicked on it. Uh, it really helps to bring in new people. And I'm not saying it's a surefire way to get new people or it always works that way. Uh, but for example, I know there's times when there's been, I think it's uh, John C., he actually, I don't even know if that's name. I could just be making that up. But one of the, one of the Jagex moderators will go when Bodhi's on his Iron Man and he's killing Dagoneth Kings, for example, and just spawn some random stuff on the ground. Now I can't, I don't re exactly remember when that happened, but I remember something similar to that happening maybe uh, last summer, the summer before. And that is something I'm okay with. But that is streamer favoritism. That is a Jagex moderator going out of their way to do something special for a streamer, in this case Bodhi, but that's something that doesn't help him in game at all. It just kind of adds a little bit comedic effect or just a little something to just keep the stream lively, which I think is okay. If you have people watching that gameplay who wouldn't normally watch or play RuneScape, they might be enticed by that. They might enjoy that, the fact that there's that openness between the staff and the players, and also that it's a little bit more of a laid back environment while still being serious and somewhat competitive and i think that's beneficial for the game overall especially when you think of reddit i mean if the reddit can really tie into that as well for example when that situation happened i remember seeing it on reddit and bodhi is fairly popular and gets upvoted quite a bit <clears throat> which will lead to more people viewing that topic or that that post and that don't normally play the game i mean there's been multiple times when 2007 Scape has been on front page. And I think the more that happens, it's better for the game. And the, there's people who played this game years ago 
didn't even know that there's an old school version. And a, there's a lot of a lot of people on Reddit who are like that. And when a post like that gets to the front page, it reaches them and allows them to kind of become familiar with the game. So when something like that happens and it, there's a post on Reddit and the user base the current user base accepts it and enjoys it, then there's a lot of benefits from that on the, the Jagex side, you know, a lot of free advertisement. And I think, you know, I don't know, I don't have any inside contacts, but that's what I would assume is their intention with this. I mean, I, I would guess some of their intention is to just be open with the, the community and be kind of intertwined. But I think advertisement is a very, very uh, good reason to do things like this. And I think it's beneficial and I personally like it. I think it's a good thing. Now, it doesn't happen a lot, which is good. I don't think they should overdo it. But there has been times where I've seen these posts on Reddit, and I think it's good exposure. And when the community accepts it, I think it's beneficial for the game overall. Now, another reason I like this type of streamer favoritism where it's non -in where there's no in-game benefits is because it's good for the community. And I kind of touched on this before. And when there's a, a game where the staff is able to kind of enjoy the game with the community, if that makes sense, then the community in turn enjoys the staff more. If the staff's able to do like little things such as Easter eggs or, you know, show up randomly and do, you know, spawn some random monster that doesn't attack anyone and the community accepts it, that really builds a stronger bond between the staff and the community, which helps a lot in a game like old school where a lot of the updates are pulled and there's a lot of communication between the staff and the players that isn't normally there in a lot of games. If, if you think about it, in a game, I mean, Overwatch just came out, and as far as I know, Overwatch doesn't ask their players to make changes. They only make changes when there's an outcry. For example, that skin, and I know that got blown way out of proportion, but there was a skin with a pose that someone didn't agree with, and they ended up changing it. And I know I don't have all the information, and I believe the original post was or a lot of the comments were based on that's, you know, not something that character would do, you know, based on the personality, but still the only reason they changed the pose is because of an outcry from the community where old school is different, where we can stop things like that, you know, at the start. And I think it's really important to have that community involvement with the staff. And I think being able to communicate, especially through streamers is a great way because streamers already have such a large viewer base and are able to do things like that. However, there is a flip side when the community does not accept it so much. And the example I'm going to use for this is Aaron uh, Saber 6. And again, I'm not trying to call anyone out and I have no intention of doing that, but there's a lot of examples that I want to use. So a while back, I don't exactly remember when I want to say it was 2014, there was a an event that was supposed to be hosted on the Jagex Twitch channel for, I believe it was some kind of clan wars and it was a lot of just PvP fighting and Saber6 was going to host it. And at the time, I looked at the stats as far back as I could find, and she was getting around, you know, 1,000 to 1,500 viewers, which in 2014 is pretty decent. Um, that's nothing to be ashamed of, especially back then. I know now you get a lot more, but the game's much more popular than it was. But at the time, Saber6 was fairly popular, and she was supposed to hold this event on the RuneScape channel, but due to some conflicts with RuneScape 3 stuff, they had to move it and they moved it to her own personal channel and they advertised it on, you know, the tr private message box that pops up, a little yellow box that gives you an advertisement and they pointed it to her channel. And there was a lot of uprising and outcry from this, from the community. There was a lot of posts on Reddit. There was a lot of stuff, you know, negative towards this. And personally, this is something that I am okay with. Uh, I understand the situation. It was a, it was a planned event. And they had to, they weren't able to do it on the main channel due to a conflict. And I guess it could have been scheduled a little bit better, or it definitely could have been scheduled better. But they were doing what they could to keep the event going as planned. But this is an example of Jagex giving this non beneficial favoritism and it being accepted negatively. Now, I know technically there was a little bit of a benefit because Saber 6 was not able to be attacked, technically had God Mode or whatever, but that's beside the point. This was an in game event, as far as I know, to be fun and enjoyable, not anything serious and competitive. So I'm okay with that, especially since it was a, a pre planned Jagex event and was supposed to be on their channel. A lot of the outcry that I'm seeing is based on the fact that uh, they advertised her personal channel, which again, I don't fully support. I would not want Jagex to constantly just advertise other people's channels. However, in this situation, due to the circumstances, I would be okay with it happening every once in a while. However, I would want 
you know, something saying that they will plan better in the future, and I'd be okay with that. And overall, I was okay with the situation. This was right when I started playing old school, I guess, I believe. I think this was the first summer that I actually started playing, and I remember hearing about this, and I remember not understanding the, the big problem with it. And again, I'm, I'm much more laid back, I guess, than some of some other people on either Reddit or YouTube or just the community in general, but I, I was fine with it. And I don't think that it really hurt anybody. Again, it did bring viewers to her channel, but I mean, in the end, it ended up hurting her uh, due to all the, the negative posts about this on mainly Reddit, I would believe would be the biggest forum board we have, because I don't think the RuneScape forums are really that active anymore or that helpful. Um, but I think in the long run, it did hurt her uh, popularity and channel. However, that's something that I'm okay with. I'm fine with things like that. You know, happening occasionally advertising someone else's stream for a Jagex scheduled event or even just interacting with a streamer. I mean, me or you, I'm mean, probably not going to get that, that Jmod interaction where they do something stupid just for fun and then leave. Um, so that is streamer favoritism because they're only going to do it for popular people, but it does bring advertisement and it's it's positive advertisement as long as the community accepts it and I think it's overall good for the game and again I think a lot of people would agree with me on this point I don't think this is the really controversial topic so if you're still listening at this point we're about to get into the controversial stuff but I think that's something that needs to be said I think it's it's good and beneficial for a game to be able to have that interaction between community and staff and I think it's overall it's fine as long as there's no in-game benefits given to the players to giving to the players from the staff i think that overall that this idea in this this method of streamer favoritism is okay and i know it's not given to every streamer as far as i know i mean i could be wrong i don't watch a lot of streamers but you know ice poseidon is usually um as far as i know kind of on his own and he's got a very unique style of streaming and that's fine but i know you know bodhi has had a lot more interaction and saber six as well due to uh, mod reach giving her a lot of preference and again i would say i would want it equaled out between all the top streamers i guess um if it's you know the non-beneficial purely advertising reasons but overall i'm not that upset about it and i'm gonna address this in the next topic but there's just just a lot of things that that don't bother me in terms of i guess streamer favoritism um, but let's get on to the other side of my definition <clears throat> which would be when there is an actual in-game benefit now this isn't going to be so much as calling out jagex more of just explaining why i'm okay with a lot of the stuff that has happened that a lot of people have been upset with um in general i would not agree with this type of streamer favoritism <clears throat> sorry my uh my throat's a little dry right now but when there's an actual in-game benefit if a, if a jagex mod gave you know very good benefits towards a specific stream or a popular youtuber i would be definitely against that but i don't believe that has happened too much and we will get into the hot topic in just a few minutes but i'm going to save that till the end um, but for now i'm going to again hit on saber six because there have been a few examples of this um, mod reach named a duck after her in falador and this is again is something i'm okay with it's not something i support and there is a difference if jagex came and on a poll asked should we name this duck uh, Aaron after this popular streamer at the time? I would be, I would say no. Uh, I don't think it's entirely appropriate, and I don't really care all that much. Personal, personally, I don't have a personal preference. You know, I don't watch her. I never watched her stream, and I never really cared too much. So I would have voted no. But the fact that it was implemented doesn't make me angry. A lot of people were mad that it wasn't pulled, especially at the time every little thing was being pulled. Uh, personally, I think this is something that is rather unobtrusive. It does set a little bit of a precedent, but again, she was fairly popular at the time in terms of streaming, and it's just the duck. It doesn't in interfere with anyone's gameplay at all, and I, I have no problem with that. Uh, so that is something that, again, the community was rather upset about that I have no problem with. And again, that's something that I would say I, I don't care, but I don't support it. So if it was in the game, it wouldn't bother me. But if it, they asked me, I would probably say, no, it's probably not a super great idea. But that's, that's I guess, the difference. Uh, another example of something similar would be with Paul and Adam, uh, a.k.a. Bodhi, uh, with the Iron Man, the whole ordeal. Um, so when you want to create an Iron Man or if you want to get your armor back, you talk to either Adam for a normal Iron Man or Paul for an ultimate Iron Man because they were really the ones that kind of uh, led the way 
in kind of bringing popularity to this type of gameplay. And this is something that I am very okay with. I think this is a great thing in a perfect form of advertisement with no in-game benefits. Again, they get popular off of the fact that they're in the game, but they did a lot of work to bring this to fruition. So again, they have much more reason to have their name in the game than someone such as, you know, Saber 6 with the duck. But on the flip side of that, there is, you know, an item called, you know, a jar of souls, I believe, that is based off of Bodhi, which has no real connection with him other than the fact that he's a ginger and it's an item in the game, but he did nothing to be influential in getting that item, if that makes sense. He was very influ influential in getting the real game mode or the Iron Man game mode uh, into the game, but there was this Jar of Souls has nothing to do with that. And that's, again, something that I'm okay with and I don't really have a big opinion on. I don't really care. I mean, I have an opinion on it. My opinion is that it doesn't matter and that people make a big deal over nothing. And I don't think that's a problem having that in the game. But I think people just kind of take these things and overreact a lot you know, with them. And I think that things that are unobtrusive and that don't really affect gameplay positively or, bet or negatively, they just, they're just there. Um, I think that's, that's a thing that's okay to have in the game. And it's, it's an okay to thing to have that streamer favoritism, especially in a game such as Old School, where having that advertisement, having that word of mouth, having that, that viewership is super important. And I think catering towards the popular streamers at the time is okay. Uh, even, you know, with the clue scrolls, sometimes you go through them when you talk to uh, Uri, he has some little quips about certain streamers or certain things that's happened in the game. And I think that's okay. I think old school is a different type of environment compared to most games. And I think having that more open, a little bit more comedic environment is okay. Uh, I'm not saying I want memes everywhere because I don't, and they kind of annoy me when they pop up, uh, but it's something I'm okay with. Uh, it's, you know, the, the old school Reddit is full of memes and it, they get mad at them. I don't completely understand. And I know there's a ton of people who use that and not everyone's going to have the same opinion. Uh, it just, it confuses me, but I just end up ignoring it because it doesn't affect me. I mean, if, if Uri says something stupid, I just continue to press space bar because I don't read it anyway. So that's not really something that affects me. And that's something I'm okay with in terms of streamer favoritism. Now, again, I know we are in the negative part of this, you know, the ones that actually get benefit, but it's really hard for me to find specifically someone who has gotten a benefit for being a streamer. Uh, the only one that I can think of that came to mind, especially when I was researching, was when Son of Old Son on Old School got a uh, player mod, which I completely don't understand because I don't think he has the personality or the helpfulness, I guess, to be a player mod. I don't think he has the requirements to be one, and I know he wasn't one for very long. Uh, I think it was just a day. I could be completely wrong on that, but I know it wasn't for very long. And that's something that I would say is not appropriate. Um, not appropriate to give a streamer a player mod position when they definitely don't deserve it. And uh, it's only due to the fact that they are a streamer, I would say. I can't think of any other reason he would become a player moderator after watching this. I've watched his streams a few times and he's just, he's, he was rather toxic. He would always talk down on people. And I mean, he could be helpful at times, just overall, I think his entire personality is not one I'd want as a player moderator. Um, but that is kind of the only thing that I would say would be a direct benefit. And I could be wrong. There might've been something that I didn't properly research or didn't look up or didn't find him research, but that's something that I would say is <clears throat> an in-game benefit from being a streamer, that's probably not appropriate. That being said, uh, now if you're still watching at this point after 18 and a half minutes, we're on to the current hot topic item, which is Emily and everything that's going on with that. And I appreciate it. I appreciate you for making it this far. And now we are actually getting to current uh, topics, I guess. So with Emily, there's been a lot, a lot of stuff that's gone on recently. Now, I don't watch Emily's stream and there's not enough cancer in the world to guilt me into watching her stream anymore. I watched it like twice just to understand what it was and I took it for five minutes maybe and just left. Uh, it's not a stream that I enjoy. It's not something that I would go to for enjoyment, especially since I think watching RuneScape in general is boring. So watching someone play RuneScape who has a negative personality is not something that I personally enjoy. But that's beside the point. My personal opinions on Emily is not the point of this video. Uh, the point of this part of the video is to explain my opinion on <clears throat> what people are claiming to be streamer favoritism towards Emily in terms of a lot of people getting banned for doing things around her. And this is a completely different topic and may span a few minutes, but it's it's a little bit different. There's This is not something with that's either in-game or out-of-game uh, benefits, or in-game or not in-game benefits. This is something that's 
uh, kind of favoritism towards where they take a stand and where they are uh, defensive or I uh, can't disciplinary, I guess is the word on the player base. Now, a lot of people have been banned for doing things near Emily. Now, a lot of people have gotten mad at this, especially in the last few weeks. There's been a huge one where a lot of people were either muted for a few days or I think only one was perma banned. And there was a huge, huge, huge uh, outcry on Reddit, you know, claiming that this is a stream of favoritism, that these people were only banned for doing uh, emotes next to Emily and it would never happen. It should never happen. Now, I'm actually uh, the opposite view. I think that it was beneficial. I think this was good because these people were proven to be toxic and were proven to have uh, the requirements of being banned or muted. And I think the fact that they were is a good thing. Now, do I think that you should that they should only ban people who are uh, offensive around streamers. I don't. I would say I would rather see everyone who is toxic or everyone who deserves a ban to be banned. But that's not the case. Uh, there's so many people in this game and there's so many toxic people in this game that I don't think it's it's feasible to be able to manage all of them with the little staff that they have. Um, but they, my computer just went to sleep. But the fact that they they do something about it, even though it is on a streamer's channel or is related to a streamer's channel, I think is okay, uh, if that makes sense. So what what I mean by this is that I, I wish that, again, everyone would be banned that deserves a ban. But I do understand that giving favoritism towards those who are streaming your game and who are generating thousands of viewers is good. I mean, you wouldn't want to see someone toxic on the front page of Twitch. You know, someone's playing RuneScape on Twitch and someone in their chat is being toxic or in-game is being toxic. Is That really throws people off and makes them not want to play the game. So being able to kind of take care of that right away is uh, should be a decent PR move. Now, it turns out that it wasn't because there was such an outcry and a, an uproar against this. However, a, every single person, I believe, except for me, I don't even think it was one. I think everyone who got banned or muted had just reason. And then the, the kind of argument switched from being, oh, these people are just doing this because they're around Emily to, oh, someone shouldn't have to be around Emily to be banned. And I think people are just grasping at, at straws or whatever that expression is. I think that the real thing is that I understand that they're going to kind of make sure that their game is clean on the outside while still managing it from the inside, if that makes sense. So if, you know, on a popular streamer, someone's being toxic, take care of that while still taking care of the everyday toxic toxicity in the background or at work. And I mean, I understand that. I'm not sure if I completely agree with with kind of catering towards streamers in that way, but I understand and I'm okay with it. Uh, those people were viable to be banned. They were toxic. They, they were racist. There were a lot of things, uh, according to Jagex, and I believe them, but I... So I'm okay with them being banned. I would like a little bit bigger stance taken on the general community, but I mean, that may be something that's not entirely feasible. Uh, maybe something that they can't do right now with their staffing and everything that's going on. But I do, I am okay with the fact that those people were banned and it was because they were on Emily's stream. Uh, I'm okay with that only because they were they were toxic and they had the ability to be banned if they were caught in any other time. Uh, so that's that's my main reasoning there. And again, I do usually tend to side with Jagex on things like this because every single time that this comes up, they always come out with proof and they always come out with a reason to, or their reasoning for banning that person. And it's always viable and it's always just. A, I mean, even just when people come out and say their account was banned unjustly, they always come back almost every single time and either... Uh, admit their mistake, which has been very few times, or they show the proof of why that person was banned. So more times than not, I do side with Jagex on the outside before. If there's no proof shown, I will lean more towards Jagex just because of their track record. Uh, but that's not saying I trust them blindly. It's just saying that I think that their system is in a spot where it's not terrible right now. So I tend to side with them if there's no evidence shown. So, I mean, that's, I guess, my general opinion on everything. Uh, it was a little bit all over the place, a little bit long. I wasn't sure how long this video was going to go, but uh, about 25 minutes at now, right at this point. 
But that being said, uh, just to kind of summarize everything, if you're still watching at this point and just zoned out for the last 25 minutes, I, I am in favor of streamer favoritism when it's beneficial for the community and offers no in-game benefits, such as um, having fun or fooling around with a top streamer while they're doing a monotonous task or even naming some NPCs after people if they had an influential part in the reason that NPCs there, such as Adam and Paul with the Iron Man. And I am okay with having non-intrusive streamer benefits, I guess, such as a duck being named Emily or advertising Saber 6's stream due to the fact that it was a scheduled event. And considering the situations, I wouldn't say I would always want that, but considering the situations, I am okay with what happened in 2014. But I am not okay with people getting direct benefits from Jagex moderators, such as what it appears that Sun on Old School's uh, P mod ship was, was, you know, due to the fact that he was a streamer. Um, but again, I am okay with people getting banned that are toxic that are caught on stream. So I guess that's a general summary of everything that I've said in the last 25 minutes. Again, if you are still watching at this point, which I've said many times, but I just feel like I wouldn't even watch this for 25 minutes. But if you have any opinions or any comments, leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. Again, keep it civil and just be nice to people uh, is what I would say. But if you have a topic that you want me to talk about in the next video, which hopefully should be either weekly or two, one or two a week, uh, leave it in the comments below or tweet me on Twitter and I'll leave the links for that in the description below. But again, I, I really had fun making this video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do want to see me keep making these style of videos, uh, leave a like or leave a comment and let me know uh, what you think. And if you don't like it, let me know too and tell me what I can change. Uh, but again, uh, that's, that's all I got for this video, guys. I am Joseph. This was Joseph's Place, and I will see you next time.